Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the September Nutrition Support Monthly Call. My name is Misty Woods, and I'll be leading today's monthly call. First, let's talk about some previous information and reminders we went over on last month monthly call, but it's important, so we wanted to mention it again this month. So the memo SFS 23-124 is the ending um, of the KKFA flexibility. So on June 25th, 2022, President Biden signed the Keep Kids Fed Act which extended USDA authority to waive certain requirements for child nutrition programs to address COVID-19. The following child nutrition program flex flexibilities ended on June 30th, 2023. The temporary higher per meal reimbursement rates for national school lunch, school breakfast, and CACFP. The temporary higher tier one reimbursement rates for tier two family daycare homes in CACFP and school year 22-23 meal service operational and administrative flexibilities offered through individual waivers, as well as off-site monitoring waivers. Memo SFS 23-128, the reimbursement rates for school year 23-24. Um, this memo announced the annual adjustments to the national average payments, the amount of money the federal government provides dates for lunches, after-school snacks, and breakfast served, in, served to children participating in the national school lunch and school breakfast programs. The annual payments and rates adjustments for the national school lunch and school breakfast reflect changes in the Food Away from Home series of the Consumer Price Index for All Urban Consumers. These rates are effective July 1, 2023 through June 30th, 2024. It reflects the June 30th, 2023 expiration of the temporary reimbursement rates provided under the Keep Kids Fed Act of 2022, which included an additional 40 cents per lunch and 15 cents per school breakfast and meal reimbursement. The reimbursement rates reflects an adjustment to the base rate from school year 22-23. So here are some snippets from the Federal Register of the reimbursement rates for national school lunch, school breakfast, and after-school snacks for the current year 23-24. For national school lunch program, you will use two columns in blue. It's either gonna be the less than 60% free and reduced plus the eight cents, or 60% or more free and reduced plus eight cents. The plus eight cents is for the menu certification, which includes everyone in Louisiana. Please note that Louisiana was not able to use or receive the maximum rate of reimbursement. We verified this with USDA. For school breakfast program, you will either use non-severe need or severe need depending on if you qualify or not. At first glance, when you compare the 23-24 reimbursement rates to the 22-23 reimbursement rates, it appears less, which has generated questions. But as explained in a previous slide, it reflects the June 30th, 2023 expiration of the temporary reimbursement rates provided under the Keep, Keep Kids Fed Act of 2022, which is that additional 40 cents for, for lunch and additional 15 cents for breakfast. In the next slide, you will see it explained again by USDA. So this slide is from the USDA update and it explains the 23-24 reimbursement rates. As a reminder, like I said before, the Keep Kids Fed Act ended June 30th, which removed the extra 40 cents and 15 cents. The 2023-2024 rates increase is equal to the amount of inflation or approximately 8.3% over last year's base rates. Here's another slide from the USDA update. It explains that with the additional supply chain assistance funds plus the eight cent increase in meal reimbursement rate equals an additional 10 cents per lunch and three cents per breakfast above the school year 22-23 reimbursement rates. So memo SFS 23-130 is about the sample procurement plan that is now available. It's available on the CMP website. 
and it can be found under the procurement section in the school food service forms. Um, this document is a sample and is not intended to be all inclusive. There are highlighted areas in the sample plan that need to be completed. SFAs can use this sample plan as a guide and revise it if necessary so that is reflective to your district's procurement procedures. Again, this document is only a sample. The SFA is ultimately responsible to ensure that the plan complies with all federal regulations, state procurement code and regulations, and local procurement policies. It is the SFA's responsibility to follow their written plan. So please make sure to use your to update your plan to reflect the new procurement thresholds and update it if they were any staffing changes. Memo SFS 23-136 is the reduced price meals law. So on June 29, 2023, House Bill 1, containing the appropriation for House Bill 282, was signed into law by the governor. And this applies to the 22-23, I'm sorry, 23-24 school year and each subsequent year. Students who qualify for reduced price meals by household size and income levels in the National School Lunch and Breakfast Program will receive breakfast and lunch meals free of charge. So here's what you need to know. You need to update the letter to the households to note that reduced price meals will be charged zero for breakfast and lunch. Students must maintain the reduced price status in your system though. Reach out to your software company if you have questions about the logistics of families not accruing unpaid meal debt. Do not collect a copay on reduced price eligible students. Submit claims like normal utilizing free, reduced, and paid categories. Appropriation control will reimburse the 30 cents per reduced price breakfast served and 40 cents per reduced price lunch served, and this will come in a separate reimbursement. Memo SFS 23-113 is the reminder about the National School Lunch Program Sodium Target 1A Transitional Standard Effective on July 1, 2023. State agencies and school meal operators are reminded that as part of the Transitional Standards for Milk, Whole Grains, and Sodium Final Rule, it went into effect on July 1, 2023 in the National School Lunch Program only. There will be no change to sodium limits for breakfast served through the school breakfast program at this time. There are several resources to aid school meal program operators in sodium target 1A implementation. Schools can access lower sodium standardized recipes that meet school meal pattern requirements through the Institute of Child Nutrition's recipe box and Team Nutrition's recipe for healthy kids, the cookbook for schools. The Institute of Child Nutrition also offers sodium reduction resources and online courses through the ICN's Shaking It Up initiative which features strategies and best practices for reducing sodium in school meals. So FNS wants to highlight the great work being done in the state. So they're requesting any information you have on event or meetings occurring through the end of October for things like with Healthy Meals Init Initiative, National School Lunch Week, and Form to School. The event or meeting can be of any size. They don't have to be a big event. And please send this information to child nutrition programs at la.gov. And on, the, on this slide is an example of how the information can be submitted. You can put the name of the event, the location, um, the date and time, and any additional information you have on the event. So this is a reminder that the 2022 Equipment Grant Request for Reimbursement is due next week, September 14th, 2023. Award funds will be sub subject to forfeiture after this deadline and will be granted to the next highest scoring SFA. Um, I think I've sent out a couple of reminder emails to those SFAs that have still not returned um, their request for reimbursement. And the requirements for reimbursement, are you gonna scan Email a scanner PDF of the actual invoice or purchase order for the piece of equipment awarded to me, misty.woods at la.gov. The invoice or PO must include the vendor name, the address, phone number, 
the POR invoice number, the name and description of equipment, and the equipment cost. Um, please make sure that the correct school is on the invoice as well. And then you also need to complete the online request for reimbursement for each site. You're going to log into the CMP website and go under the equipment grant, the 2022 application. Click on the awarded site application. Click on request for funding at the top of the application. Input the dollar amount for the piece of equipment based on the purchase order or the invoice and click the request button to submit. And as a reminder, the reimbursement process will not start until both the invoice and the online request for reimbursement is received for all awarded sites in the SFA. School year 2024 administrative reviews. There's gonna be a total of 36 administrative reviews to be conducted in the 23-24 school year. It'll include the New Orleans area, plus the sponsors with serious operational problems on their last review. It will be year five of the five-year cycle. CN Resources will be conducting the majority of the reviews, and the state agency will be leading five reviews this school year. We will be reaching out soon to schedule technical assistance and the on-site review dates. The state agency will be able to implement a five-year review cycle as a result of the new final rule released last week. We do not have a firm schedule yet of who will be reviewed in year one, which is school year 25. It will take the state agency some time to develop the new review cycle. So please re request technical assistance if needed. The state agencies received notice of a fourth allocation of supply chain assistance funds in the amount of $20,975,904. State agencies will distribute this fourth round of SCA funding to eligible SFA, SFAs via the same formula used to distribute the first three rounds of funds. There is a deadline date for state agency to distribute funds by September 30th, 2023. However, there is not a deadline for SFAs to expend the funds on a local level. It is encouraged that SFAs expend funds timely since there is additional tracking associated with SCA funds, but it is okay if it takes you until next school year to expend all of those funds. So let's talk about a four-day school week. If your district has switched to the four-day school week, you must use the four-day week meal pattern for weekly totals required for menus. It can be found on the USDA website. A link is also provided on this slide. Consider if your schools qualify for an extended school day for a school day snacks. We will talk about expanded learning time and after school snacks in the next couple of slides. Consider implementing at-risk supper and snack feeding to increase revenue. Consider increasing breakfast participation by implementing breakfast after the bell or second chance breakfast or grab and go in the hallways. Increase your extra sales. And there are districts currently operating four-day school weeks, so many would be happy to share you their best practices. So summer EBT is now permanently in regulations and will begin in summer 2024. Summer EBT is gonna be different from pandemic EBT. It's $40 a month benefit for eligible students and there's more information to come on this. So now let's discuss the memos that have been posted since our last monthly call. We're gonna start with memo SFS 23-137 and continue through memo SFS 23-147. So memo SFS 23-137 is the after-school meal snack service in schools operating expanded learning time. This memo is in reference to the calculation of a state average 
to be used in order to determine eligibility of after school meal or snack service in an expanding learning time school day for the 23-24 school year for CACFP and NSLP. For clarification, an after school meal or snack service could refer to the after school snack program available as an extension of the National School Lunch Program to school sites that participate, or the at-risk snack option as offered through CACFP, but not both at a given site. Further, it can refer to the supper meal service as provided through CACFP at-risk program. We have several districts that were switching to the four-day school weeks, which has led to the questions about the after-school meals and snacks if operating expanded learning time. In order to qualify for the expanded learning time exception during the 23-24 school year, a school district must operate a minimum of seven hours, and that is for instruction time. The seven hours is for instruction time on a normal school day for the 23-24 school year. Eligibility determinations for these programs must be based on whether such programs are after school care programs with an educational or enrichment purpose in accordance with regulations set forth by USDA in 7 CFR 210 and 7 CFR Part 226. If you are operating an expanded learning time and wish to provide after school snacks or meals under this exception or have questions, you can contact Chandra Scott for NSLP after school snacks or Karen Schecksnyder for CACFP meals and snacks. The state has determined that the average length of an instructional day is approximately six hours. If a school or school district wishes to use the state average length of school day when considering providing after school snacks or meals, it may utilize the six hours as a reference to determine if it qualifies as operating an expanded learning time during the 23-24 school year. If a school or district operates a minimum of seven hours of instruction time in a normal school day for the 23-24 school year, it may qualify to serve snacks to children participating in expanded learning time, which is after the normal school day reference time. Please note that school sites should not schedule snack or meal service before the six hour average has been reached. If your school or district does not utilize expanded learning time, then flexibilities discussed in this memo will not apply to your after school snack or meal program. For schools that do not meet the criteria for extended, expanded learning time, Please be sure to adhere to the requirements set forth in 7 CFR Part 210 and 226 in regards to after-school snack meal service, which allows for schools to begin service only after the academic school day has ended. LDOE requires a minimum of one hour to elapse between the start of one meal service and the start of the next in an after-school snack meal environment. This verification for expanded learning time for NSLP after school snack program form will be required if you are operating the after school snack program using the expanded learning time. You will need to list the school sites, school day start time and school day end time, as well as snack meal service time. You will certify that the SFA operates an expanded learning time program and operates a minimum of seven hours of instruction time in a normal school day. If you are operating a CACFP at-risk program, it will be auto-built into the CACFP at-risk application. And these forms will be released soon. Memo SFS 23-138, the state attendance factor for school year 23-24. The state attendance factor for school year 23-24 is 95.48%. Unless a custom attendance factor is requested by SFA, the default will be the state's currently approved attendance factor, with the exception of the residential child care institutions, which will have an attendance factor set at 100%. 
A school food authority may use the annually determined state attendance factor or may calculate a custom attendance factor. If the SFA wishes to utilize a custom attendance factor, the attendance factor form must be completed. Memo SFS 23-139 is the online application is now open for school year 23-24. Um, majority of people have submitted their applications, but we're still working on processing some. The School Food Service online application is on the CMP website. It's accessible through Louisiana. I'm sorry. Um, you must be logged in to the website to access the forms. The due date for submission was August 30th, 2023. Some people we had request extensions and we're working on those as well. If you have not submitted your application, please submit ASAP. You will not be able to submit any claims for reimbursement until your application is submitted and approved. It includes two parts, the National School Lunch and Breakfast Program online application and the Seamless Summer Waiver Form. The National School Lunch and Breakfast Forms consist of requirements, policy checklists, Schedule A, collection procedures, collection officials, and income and expense. Updates have been made to the online application to increase usability, and you can always refer to the CMP website user, user manual for guidance. But again, most of you have already submitted this. Memo SFS 23-140 um, is the new school lunch menu e-poster. USDA's Team Nutrition is excited to announce the release of the new school lunch menu e-poster. This resource is designed for school nutrition programs to display daily lunch menu options and remind students to eat a variety of fruit, foods while building a reimbursable meal. This fillable PDF file can be used for electronic message boards, web pages, and social media, or can be printed and displayed in sign holders. Memo SFS 23-141 is important information about the health coverage among CMP participants. The U.S. Department of Health and Human Services Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services are reaching out for help to prevent child nutrition program participants from losing Medicaid or Children's Health Insurance Program, CHIP, coverage as a result of the end of the federal public health emergency. The letter encourages participants and their families on Medicaid or CHIP to do the following. Update contact information with the state Medicaid or CHIP agency. Respond to the Medicaid or CHIP renewal form when it arrives to keep coverage. Parents should respond even if you don't think that you're eligible, your kids could still be eligible. Consider other coverage options. If you are no longer eligible for Medicaid or CHIP, check if you can get covered through your employer, through the Affordable Care Act marketplace at healthcare.gov or through Medicare. Share the enclosed template letters and downloadable flyers available in English and Spanish with Child Nutrition Program participants. Memo SFS 23-142 July SNAP, TANF, and June Medicaid free and Medicaid reduced files were loaded to eScholar. The following files were loaded, the June Medicaid free and Medicaid reduced and the July SNAP and TANF. Districts, public and non-public, must first submit their students for LACID assignment before they can run their own direct match matches. Districts should resolve their near matches and then download the DM index files to load into their food service systems. And if you need assistance with this, please email Jane. Memo SFS 23-143, the PEBT local level funding. So in addition to the benefits awarded directly to families, USDA made funding available to all operators of the National School Lunch and National School Breakfast programs responsible for activities related to the fiscal year 2023 State Pandemic Electronic Benefits Transfer, or PEBT. LDOE is responsible for providing funding to all schools. Fiscal year 23 PEBT are all PEBT activities that occurred between October 1st, 2022 
and September 30th, 2023, in conjunction to PBT benefits issued for school year 22-23 and summer 2023. These activities include, but are not limited to, reporting student level data, fielding questions from the community, and collecting and processing applications solely for PEBT. We have received the local PEBT Administrative Cost Grant, FNS 529 for fiscal year 2023, executed in the amount of $423,526. The CFDA number is 10.649. Payments will contain the comment fiscal year 23 FNS PBT R3 in the LA Gov payment system, and they were issued on August 17th, 2023. Memo SFS 23-144, the Initial Implementation Memo for Child Nutrition Program Integrity Final Rule. This memo provides initial implementation guidance for the Child Nutrition Program Integrity Final Rule. It relates to program-specific changes in the Child and Adult Care Food Program, the National School Lunch Program, the School Breakfast Program, and Summer Food Service Program. It applies to state agencies, administering and school food authorities, institution and sponsors implementing National School Lunch, School Breakfast, CACFP in summer. Included in the memo is a chart that provides an overview of the provisions codified in the final rule and compliance dates for each provision. We will have additional memos and guidance to come. Memo SFS 23-145 is the July Medicaid free and Medicaid reduced files were loaded to East Scholar. Districts will have to run their own direct match matches after they have submitted their students for listed assignment. And districts will resolve any near matches and download the DMX index files to load onto their food service systems. And for assistance with this as well, please email Jane. Memo SFS 23-146, the revised menu planner for school meals. Um, the menu planner for school meals has been revised to reflect the 2022 final rule for child nutrition programs, the trans transitional standards for milk and whole grains and sodium. And this technical resource is designed to help school nutrition professionals plan, prepare, provide, and market great tasting, nutritious, and safe meals. You may access the menu planner for school meals at the website linked on this slide. So memo SFS 147 is CEP claiming reminder. As August comes to a close, which we're now in September, and SFS, SFAs begin to submit monthly claims, please verify that the correct claiming percentage is utilized. If your school district has elected to participate in CEP for the 23-24 school year, your claims must reflect the appropriate claiming percentage. To calculate your SFA CEP claiming percentage, log on to the CMP website, click on the green school food service tab, then click the CEP participation in the green sidebar, click current participation, and view the totals section and locate the, I, the total ISP. For schools participating in CEP, the ISP multiplied by 1.6 equals the percentage of meals claimed at the free rate. If the claiming percentage is 100% or greater, all student meals are claimed at the free rate. However, if the claiming percentage is below 100%, the remaining meals served up to 100% are claimed at the paid rate. For additional assistance in calculating your claims, feel free to utilize the CEP spreadsheet that's linked on this slide. Also, please visit the Louisiana Fit Kids website to review the slides and video from the CEP training for more information. So now let's discuss what's new in resources and some updates since the last monthly update. 
The Institute of Child Nutrition Training on Financial Management for Directors will be held at Pennington Biomedical Research Center on Thursday, October 12th. The registration is now live on louisianafitkids.com. Registration is $25. Registration is limited to 40 participants. So if you're interested, please register soon. Lunch will be provided. And please consider bringing your business manager if you think it would be beneficial for them. The Form to School Conference will be held at Pennington Biomedical Conference Center on Wednesday, October 11th from 8 to 4 p.m. The cost is $23 per person and will include breakfast, lunch, refreshments, and sessions throughout the day. Registration is required to attend and can be found at the link on this slide. And the, Louis the annual Louisiana Farm to School Conference will gather participants from across the state for an opportunity to learn, celebrate, share, and inspire the movement of bringing healthy, local sustainability grown foods to the minds and plates of students in Louisiana and beyond. The event is for everyone who's, whose desire is to increase access to local food and food education in their school communities. The state update and our training will be held on Thursday, November 30th from 8.30 to 4, also at Pennington Biomedical Research Center. The cost will be $10 for the day and breakfast and lunch will be provided. So now I wanna go over um, about how you can sign up to start receiving memos and newsletters. So this can be found on the CMP website underneath where you normally would log in. And you're gonna click on the Louisiana Department of Education DNS mailing list. And at the top of the next page on the right-hand side, you need to click on sign up. And on this screen, you need to fill out the required fields, the first and last name, email addresses and password, and then enter the code on the screen and then click okay. You should receive an email within 15 minutes of a validation code and instructions. And on this screen, you will need to enter in your email address and the validation code you received in the email. And then you're gonna click okay. You will then receive an email that you are now signed up for Louisiana Department of Education Division of Nutrition Support mailing list. You should start receiving the, the memos and newsletters. If you don't, please reach out to Child Nutrition Programs at LA.gov and we may be able to help you. Next, I'm gonna go over how to find the memos on the CMP website. You can either find the memos from the home page of the CMP website or from the sign-in page on the CMP website. To find the memos from the home page, you can either click on school food service section or the resources. And to find memos from the sign-in page of the website, you can click on memo resources section. And if you're starting from the home page, after you click on school food service section or the resources section, it will take you to this page. You will then click on the memos tab. On this page, you will then click on School Food Service tab. Here, you can either click on the Memos tab at the top or you can click on the View School Food Service Memos. And now you are on the page of all School Food Service Memos. You will select the year from the Dropbox. You can choose a different year if you are needing a different year. Then you will click where it says click here to view all 2023 memos.
It will then list all the 2023 memos in the order the memo was posted. And there are a lot of memos posted in 2023. For example, today's call, we went over memos starting with 137. This screenshot shows the memos at the beginning of the year starting at SFS 23-001. You will also notice the newsletters are listed as well. To help quickly find a memo you are looking for, you can search the memo by keyword. You can select a year to help narrow down the search, but it's not required to select a year. In this example, supply chain was entered into the search box. The search results will show all memos with the keyword supply chain. It includes memos about supply chain disruptions, supply chain assistance funds, supply chain surveys, et cetera, from multiple years from 2021, 2022, and 2023. We were asked to clarify some information in regards to manager certification. So manager certification is no longer a requirement. It was required when Bulletin 1196 was in place, but that, was, but that is not the case anymore. However, on the Schedule A, you are certifying that the manager meets all state requirements to work as a manager and has been adequately trained. And as you can see on this screenshot from the Schedule A, Managers should be trained on the operation of food service, meal patterns, offer versus serve, HACCP, sanitary code, food safety, um, proper food handling, proper use of equipment, personnel management, record keeping and accountability, point of service, meal counting and claiming, processing free and reduced apps, etc. Manager training is still offered, but not required to take through Pennington or the Department of Education. It can be done at the district level. Just FYI, the next virtual manager training through Pennington and LDOE will be held in January. Also, the USDA menu certification worksheets have been updated to reflect the sodium 1A target that went into effect on July 1st. There are links to the worksheets on the CMP website under the form sections. The most updated worksheets will have the date 5-26-2023 on the instructions page. And as a reminder, you are not required to submit menu certification forms with your CMP application annually. However, it is the best practice to complete the menu certification worksheets annually to make sure your menus are still in compliance, especially now with the new sodium requirements in effect. On this slide is a staffing update of, in the Division of Nutrition Support. So we have Stephanie Loop as the Executive Director, myself as the Director of School Food Service, Chandra Scott as the School Food Service Coordinator. We have a vacant position for the Administrative Specialist, which was previously Lily. We have Dana Dozat, Toya Porter, Jody Lohr, Stacy Griffin, now Lily Franklin, Kendra Randall, Donald DeRuin, Katie Moses will be starting next week. We do have another education consultant a position that a job offer has been made. We have Janet Dupree, who was part-time, and Wayne Dupree, who was part-time. And then we also have the Summer Food Service Coordinator position that is currently vacant. I know many people were asking for an update of who's in the office, and this is the, the most current up-to-date list. So this slide and the next slide were shared as part of the system leaders call from the Louisiana Department of Education to the superintendents and principals on September 1st. So all schools participating in the National School Lunch and School Breakfast Program must follow fe federal requirements for competitive foods and beverages. Competitive foods and beverages are those that are sold to students on school campus during the school day and outside of the federally, federally reimbursement meal program. And as a note, the school day is defined by USDA as midnight before the school day 
to 30 minutes after the school day. Examples may be foods or beverages sold in vending machines that are not reimbursable meals, student stores, fundraisers, or a la carte items sold by school food service department. Competitive foods must be smart snack compliant, and Louisiana Fit Kids has resources available to help assist schools in identifying compliant foods that can be sold at schools. The competitive foods rule is designed to promote the healthy and nutritious meals offered in the national school lunch and breakfast programs. When less healthy foods are in competition with school meal programs, children miss out on important nutrition that helps them learn and grow. Additionally, non-allowable competitive foods lower participation in school meals programs. These smart snack standards are federal requirements for all foods sold outside of the national school lunch and breakfast programs. Possibly most critical is the potential to lose reimbursement for all meals so sold on a day competitive food standards are violated. This loss of reimbursement must be paid back to the school food authority through non-federal funds. So I want to take a minute to talk about some CACFP application changes. There is a new question um, for school food authorities only. CACFP regulations allow school food authorities which serve meals to children five years old and older and are prepared in school participating in National School Lunch School Breakfast Program to substitute the National School Lunch School Breakfast meal pattern requirements for the CACFP meal pattern. SFAs must indicate which meal pattern they are electing to follow when serving CS CACF CACFP participants that are five years or older. Meals and snacks served to preschoolers that are not commingled with other students must follow the CACFP meal pattern. Selection of the National School Lunch Program meal pattern will require the SFA to complete and submit menu certification for CACFP meals. If the National School Lunch Program meal pattern is selected, more information will be requested during the application approval process. And this is for the CACFP applications. For the CACFP facility application, there is a new question for at-risk after-school programs only. You need to indicate whether the at-risk after-school site will participate in offer versus serve. Offer versus serve may only be used for breakfast, lunch, or supper service and may not be used for snack service. The CACFP facility application changes. Um, this is a continuation. School board authorities that are requesting approval for the expanded learning time option must certify that the school site operates a minimum of seven hours of instructional time in a normal school day. This is different from the total school day, which includes lunch break, recess, etc. All school sites must also provide the school's operating hours. And in, in a, a reminder regarding the application revision deadlines, revisions are not considered approved until your agency receives electronic confirmation of the approval. Site additions will only be approved for CACFP participation to start in the month that the facility application was submitted. It is recommended that site additions be submitted before the site actually begins CACFP operations. All required paperwork for the addition of a new site must be submitted prior to the facility being added to the sponsor CACFP facility listing. Submission and acceptance of required paperwork is not considered approval. The sponsor must complete and submit the facility application to the state for final approval. At-risk sponsors requesting to serve meals or snacks on weekends or holidays must submit and receive prior approval for those operating dates. Weekend or holiday service will not receive retroactive approval. 
Calendar changes must be submitted as soon as possible, preferably before the change occurs. Calendar changes that are not submitted in a timely manner will have no guarantee of being granted approval before the claiming deadline. If you make any changes that affect the calendar, meals, snacks, serves, enrollment, or food service labor, then you must always submit a sponsor and budget application revision along with the facility application revision. If you are adding a new site, you must always submit a sponsor and budget application revision along with the new facility app. If all required applications are not submitted together in a revision package, the applications will be returned to the sponsor as incomplete applications. And again, this is regarding CACFP. So with that, if you have any questions, you can put them in the chat box. You can also email us at childnutritionprograms at la.gov, or you can give us a call at 225-342-9661. So I'll first check to see what questions we have in the chat. There is a question about the procurement sample plan and what, what should they be aware of. The main changes that were made to the sample plan compared to last year's sample plan was the procurement thresholds have been updated, but the highlighted stuff is all the things that are related to um, the SFA name, things like that are the highlighted parts that need to be uh, updated to reflect your district. There is a question about asking if something has changed with the mailing list. Um, not to my knowledge, if you are signed up for the mailing list, you should be receiving um, the memos when they're released as well as the newsletters. Uh, there's a question about the CAC regarding the CAC of meal pattern. Um, if there's an additional form that needs to be complete, you can contact Ms. Karen Schecksnyder with CACFP to know that would exactly what you need to do in addition um, if you choose to do the national school lunch meal pattern. Um, Claire, if you can give me a call or send me an email, um, I'll be happy to get more specific information from you so I can answer your question better.
Okay, so a little clarification on the after school snack in seven hours. If your school is operating more than seven hours of instruction time, then you can offer after school snacks before the start of the school day, but that average school day of six hours has to be met first. And if that is the case, that form that I mentioned in the, the slide, you will have to fill that out basically um, verifying the times and that you you know that you are having you're meeting that time for expanded learning um, but it will be part of the application next year which is too late to add it to the application for this school year because after school snack is meant to be after school but if you qualify for that expanded learning you can potentially serve it before So at this time, I'm not seeing any more questions in the chat box. Again, if you have any more questions, you can contact us at childnutritionprograms at la.gov, or you can give us a call at 225-342-9661. Thanks, everyone, for your attention today, and we'll see you on next month's call. Thank you.